Hello, Izzy. Hello, Izzy. <laughs> and this is our, our 2010 Toyota Hilux. Uh, we've got the SR model. Uh, I thought I'd take you through today a couple of the modifications that we have uh, made to our car. Um, the, the journey we've gone on. Uh, it's been probably close to two years in the making. And um, a couple of you have um, commented on the car and so I thought we'd go through it today just to see um, just so share with you guys what we've what we've done. So the engine compartment is pretty much stock. Uh, we haven't done a great um, great deal in here, but what we have done is added a dual battery system. In fact, I lied. This was already in the car when we bought it. Um, so we've got a Piranha dual battery management system. Um, uh, so we've got a spare battery over here and our uh, winch isolation switch over here. Um, the second battery is a deep cycle battery so uh, we average probably uh, three to five days uh, off-road without needing to charge the batteries um, in the event that we do we've got a, uh, a king solar blanket um, that we can plug straight into the battery management system or onto the um, battery itself uh, to give us a bit of extra juice um, while we're out camping and doing whatever it is we're doing so on the front here, we've got our TJM Outback bull bar. It's a good heavy duty steel bull bar. Uh, we had replaced the Toyota stand one that came on it. Um, we just like this one a bit better, a um, bit more heavy duty. Um, and we we're going to add the winch, which meant we we're going to have to buy extra bits and pieces for the stand Toyota one anyway, so it was just easier to do that. Uh, we've got a 6dB UHF aerial over here. You'll notice it's a good one, 1 1.2 meters, and the reason we've got such a big antenna on here is purely for the terrain that we live in. Um, the the sort of touring we do at the moment, it's uh, very flat terrain, so this gives us the, the range that we need. The second antenna over here is our FM antenna, and that was about replacing the factory one with something that was a bit, a uh, bit bigger, uh, and gave us a bit more uh, radio reception as we headed further and further away from civilization, It's a lot better than the factory, uh, so I don't know if the factory one was just dodgy or um, not, but this one seems to work better. We have our IPF, Extreme Sports, on the front. Um, when we bought these, they had a halogen globe in them. We've since replaced those with a HID conversion. Um, and the distance we probably get on that now is about a, oh, a K, K or so um, and it's chalk and cheese between a uh, standard lighting. We will probably add uh, some LEDs at some point um, to the front of the bull bar. I haven't quite thought of how I want to do that yet but that's more about giving us the, the spread up close. Uh, I really like the HIDs, I'm probably not going to replace those anytime soon. Down the bottom we have our TJM winch. This is a nine and a half uh, thousand pound winch. Um, that was our most recent accessory, um, and that's just a synthetic rope uh, cable. So we really haven't had to use it up here um, because we don't go anywhere that extreme. Um, and when we when we do, uh, we seem to get ourselves out with a snatch, something like that. But where we're heading. Uh, Different, different terrain, different type of four-wheel driving, so uh, we hope to be uh, using this again more in the future. So up top here we have our ARB awning uh, sitting on our Rhino heavy duty roof racks. The awning is a two and a half by three meter, uh, so it's fairly large, and it's on the driver's side. Uh, the reason we did it on the driver's side, and I'll show you this after, is because the electrical, so our fridge, our um, and running like lighting, all the power is on this side of the, the canopy. So it's just easier for us running on that side of the car um, more than anything else. So when we bought this car, it had a standard high top canopy. Uh, it was Toyota, a Toyota branded, but I believe the ARB and the Toyota canopies are exactly the same. They look exactly the same. The only thing that's different about this one, which is why we went for it, so the, the other canopy had some damage in it, so we replaced it. And the reason we went for this type of canopy is because you've got the 
lift up windows on the side and on the inside I can lift up the back window to clean it. Um, it's neither here nor there but it wasn't a luxury we had with the um, canopy that we had on it. We had a, on the bottom down here we've got a brand new TJM rear step uh, with tow ball. Uh, the reason for the step was primarily about uh, giving us ease of access into the back. Um, there were a couple of accidents we had very early on where we stepped on the bull bar and you, you slip and it hurts just a tad. So this just allows us to, sit, um, to get up in the back of it um, easy enough. Um, and yeah. In the rear of the vehicle we've got our outback drawers. These were bought second hand from a mate of mine um, but they've worked a real charm. Our left drawer, which at the moment is set up for a touring trip, so we're about to do a very large trip and that's what it's set up for. So uh, it's got, we've got our ARB cargo bags and they're set up in such a way that we've got access to what we need to when we need them. So the front one's just got the bare essential stuff that we're going to want to have access to every time we stop or stuff like that. The second one's got our camping gear and this uh, third one's just got a bit of lots of uh, bits and pieces that we might need for, um, but don't really, they're just in cases if you like. And on the right hand side is where we keep all our recovery gear, bits and pieces, stuff like that. So I've got all the recovery gear in the in the drawer, um, shackles, spare tie down ropes, um, some wheel cleaner if you're really interested, um, all sorts of odds and ends. On the left hand side we have our uh, a fuse block. This fuse block uh, was wired in after the fact. I got that done because we wanted to be able to wire additional accessories in but manage them properly as opposed to running everything to the battery. And on the right hand side we've got our compressor hardwired in. Um, so any time we need to inflate the tyres while we're out and about, we've got our compressor there. So on the left side of the riff racks we've got our high lift jack and our max tracks. Um, the max tracks would normally stay in the drawers, but at the moment because the car's fully loaded, we've got no room in the drawers, they're fully loaded for a trip we're about to do. So I'll put them up here for now. Um, doesn't really matter, but um, I just think leaving them up here is just an invitation to steal them, so they'll probably come off as soon as uh, we've finished our trip. One of the last modifications we did to this vehicle was the tyres and suspension. We we'll replace the factory rims with a Sunraiser uh, steel rim, and we've also added these Toyo all-terrain tyres. I haven't had Toyos before. I'm not overly um, familiar with with them at all, but they got a good deal, so we'll give them a go. Um, if I don't like them, I won't buy them again. In terms of suspension, we've um, We've done a Petters GVM upgrade. Um, at the same time, we gave it a two inch lift. The reason we've gone for a two inch lift and, and, and nothing more really was, it's a touring vehicle. We don't do a hell of a lot of um, extreme four wheel driving. Most of what we do is just um, a couple of dirt tracks, maybe tougher terrain. So we didn't want to go overkill and add unnecessary strain um, to the CV joints, um, you know, steering control arm, stuff like that. Um, so I'm happy. I'm happy with that. We probably gained close to two and a half inches in, in height from what it was, um, and yeah. Right. Oh, so the interior we haven't changed a hell of a lot, um, but we have added a few things. So up the top here we have our, our outback roof console. In here we keep a few extra bits and pieces like mapping, um, some spare bits and pieces that we might just want in the car, easy reach stuff. And inside the roof console, we've got a ICOM UHF radio. Now this is a business grade radio, so um, I just like them. I've always been a big fan of ICOM's gear, so that's why I buy it for myself. Um, what else? So we've added the RAM mount for the iPad. This iPad uh, is used for a number of things. So off-road navigation, uh, first of all. So we've got a HEMA map so, uh, loaded onto here, so any given time, if we need to we can reference points on the, on the fly um, my wife's a nav so <laughs> she she does all that sort of stuff but the other stuff we've got on on the ipad for just quick easy reference is our weather monitoring 
Uh, we use it for um, doing a quick check-in um, on Facebook from time to time with our friends and family so they know that and our satellite tracking uh, is also linked in to an app on the iPad. So really good gear, really good mount um, and yeah, invaluable tool when we're going camping or off-road. In the dash, we've got a VMS in-dash uh, system, so obviously the standard radio and all that, but we've got VMS both on-road and off-road mapping here as well, and we're carrying an assortment, assortment of paper maps, so wherever we get lost, it's because we really haven't prepared, uh, because we've got so much mapping redundancy, it's not funny. Um, the seat covers were, they're, they're a good heavy-duty canvas seat cover um, made by a company in WA uh, called Got You Covered. Um, these have been great. We've got a young uh, three-year-old who tramps dirt throughout the car, so we've got the, the rear and the front seats covered. And I think that's about it, really. Um, this man up here is for our satellite communicator, so when we're doing long long haul driving or out on a bush track, um, our friends and family can monitor us via a satellite communicator. Um, in terms of other communication as well, so besides the UHF, besides the um, satellite communicator, which we can message off from Solon to the fourth, we've also got a sat phone, and that sat phone's for absolute emergencies. We don't we don't use it um, at all, other than when we have to, which is never. Um, so if we have to use it, we're we're in a spot of bother, and um, we need help now. Otherwise, we just um, use the inreach for day to day communications. One modification I almost forgot to tell you about was our three inch exhaust. So we pulled the factory off and we put on um, the three inch exhaust. Now I don't know whether or not it does make an ounce of a difference or not. I'm not I'm not a mechanic, but a lot of my mates are mechanics. Um, some of them are four wheel drive enthusiasts as well. Uh, so besides the obvious sound difference, uh, it sounds great. Um, I've noticed that. Um, after we did all the modification work to the car, it was really dragging in the ass. Whereas now, um, doesn't doesn't seem to drag anywhere near as much. Just seems to breathe a lot better. So um, that w we made that change uh, after a couple of recommendations, and so far I'm really happy with it. So thank you. That's our rig. Um, I hope I've covered off everything. If I haven't, I'll be sure to give you guys an update. Um, I just want to say a big thank you. We've got about a thousand followers on social media now. Um, and you know we just want to share our passion for four-wheel driving but also just touring you know we're not we're not hardcore four-wheel drivers you know we're a young couple with a three-year-old um, so we're not gonna do anything too extreme but we, we love exploring this country we love uh, sharing that experience with you so thank you very much um, please feel free to like share or comment and uh, we'll answer as many questions as we can